Well, good afternoon. We're excited for game week. Uh, started our prep for Nickel State probably about a week ago, um, mixing in some scout team work with uh, some K-State, K-State stuff still, and then uh, turned our focus uh, mainly to those guys probably last Thursday. So uh, most of the game plan is in. We're just kind of refining some things. We still need uh, the remaining practices we have over the next three days to make sure that uh, oh, we're just uh, getting guys in the right position and, and uh, continuing to refine some of the things, red zone stuff, some situational things, goal line, third down, two minute, those things over the next few days. But uh, I know the guys are excited about uh, hitting somebody else and playing somebody different. But uh, as I told them yesterday, we still have to uh, do our work and attack each day and continue to stack good days here. Uh, Saturday will get here soon enough, so uh, open up for questions. Coach, you entered camp with a few uh, open scholarships around this time of the year. A lot of walk-ons do go on scholarships. Do you have any names that you've put on your Yeah, um, just on? trying to think off top of my head. Um, um, let's see, Landry Weber, we put on aid. Uh, Noah Johnson, we put on aid. And Tyler Burns, we put back on aid. Okay. Well, I want guys that can uh, that can challenge uh, their peers and challenge their brothers, and and uh, you know sometimes they they make the unpopular decision, but it's the one that's the right for uh, for the team, and uh, it's the guys that uh, uh, I think as I've seen through whether it's years of coaching or just in this past year, I saw what some of these guys did from a leadership standpoint in the, in the winter when it was new for everybody to the spring when it was new for everybody through the summer and fall, uh, that uh, uh, those guys, um, you know, they make everybody around them better. I look for servant leaders, which is somebody that, uh, you know, isn't worried about his statistics, so to speak. He's worried about making sure everybody around him is better, whether that's on the field, off the field. And I think we have some great captains this year. You know, just continuing to grow every game, I think that's the biggest thing is um, I've been really pleased with his progress he's made so far and in the, in the leaps he's made from spring to summer to summer to fall, uh, the amount of things he's able to process uh, in the classroom and taking that in the classroom out onto the field. And, and I just think every week he's going to feel more and more comfortable and every week I think we're going to put more and more on his plate. Um, and uh, so I, I don't have anything statistically or anything. I just think him getting more and more comfortable on a week-to-week -week basis and, and him um, uh, or us al being allowed to add more things to his plate is going to be determine his success. Coach, being that it is game one, not just for the season, but for these guys in your system, how much do you anticipate in terms of growing pains, getting guys in the right spot? You always worry about it in the first game. I think everybody does from, you know, false starts to delay of games to somebody jumping off sides to just having to call timeout because we don't have something right. To, you know, we've, we've tried to, you know, replicate as many of those things as we can in practice, uh, but there's going to be some anxiety. Uh, and so some kids are going to make mistakes. And I think that's the thing that uh, uh, our coaches have talked about is, you know, we need to be patient. We're still only – you know, really a little over about 40 practices with these guys and uh, not even 40 practices. So we're going to have some issues and we'll, we'll get those things ironed out. But I think for us to not to show the that we're anxious or have anxiety, I think we'll, we'll make the kids a little bit more at ease as well. But uh, I also know that uh, I don't want to take that excitement away. I don't want to take that uh, emotion away of that first game. And, and so, um, you know, if somebody makes an aggressive penalty uh, on the first game, you know, we're going we're gonna to learn from those things and, and continue to be teaching moments. Can I ask about Josh Youngblood, too? I know he's not technically on the depth chart there at receiver, but is he someone you still anticipate playing quite a bit? Yeah, I see him uh, in the mix of, of six or seven guys. Um, you know, whether you put it too deep for us as a, as a wide receiver or tight end, we've always played a lot of those guys anyway. So I would envision Josh playing this week, yes. You spent a lot of years as the punter of this kind of matchup in the FCS Power 5 matchup. How does it feel to be on the other side of this? Um, you know, I... 
I don't know because I've never been here before, but in the same respect, I know what those teams are going through, and I know that um, you prepare all summer, all fall camp for your opportunities to play an FBS opponent, and we talked about that with the team, that uh, um, this is a big opportunity um, uh, for Nichols, but in the same respect, I think it's a really big opportunity for our players at Kansas State to um, put their best foot forward in, in what we hope to be a, a really successful season. And so I try not to get caught up into one game's any more important than another, but this is the game we're at, and, and I know we're going to get Nichols' best. And when you have a quarterback like they have with the amount of experience, you're not going to rattle this guy. So you have to do a great job of uh, – uh, showing different looks and being able to pressure and being able to play coverage and just uh, let the game flow uh, happen as it does. But we, by no means, are our guys going to overlook Nichols. Well, let's stay on that. What's Nichols present offensively? Uh, a great quarterback, a, a guy that uh, I have a ton of respect for. I've watched him play. Uh, our last couple of years I've watched him play because we've played teams that they've played in the playoffs. And so he's got a great, great bunch of moxie he's an athletic guy um, not a very big guy but he plays big I mean he runs the ball extremely well he's, he throws it with accuracy he just knows their system so well and so I don't think you know it, the environment's going to be great and we need our fans to be really loud especially on third down but this guy's seen an awful lot and so um, we have to be really precise on our coverages and really precise on our looks um, because uh, I think he's seen an awful lot of football. Describe Nichols defensively. I think they're going to be uh, aggressive. Um, they're going to give you a lot of different pictures, a lot of different blitz looks. They're going to try to show you the same picture and then all of a sudden play coverage out of it. Next time, uh, pressure out of it. Uh, I like uh, a number of their returning players they have, whether it's secondary linebacker or D-line. They're very active. Um, and... Uh, you know, they don't give up the explosive play, and that's something that uh, we have to find ways to find a few of those explosive plays. We, we, you know, we can methodically move the ball down the field. We believe we can, but we need to have some explosive plays as well. Coach, you've got uh, Nick Leonard's list of the tight end and fullback in the depth chart. Just, I guess, tell us exactly what you are expecting out of him. To play tight end and play fullback. But all those guys, if you look at us over the years, I mean, it didn't matter. Our guys have to be able to be multiple spots. And when I say – that he's going to be an on-the-ball land tight end. He's going to be in the backfield. He may be flexed out, but I could go through that list of, of tight ends and fullbacks that we would list on our depth chart. They have to be able to do all those things in Coach Mess's system uh, and, and to be versatile. And so, um, you know, those guys, the more that they can do, the better off our offense will be. Yeah, I was excited for Kyle because uh, he missed so much football in the spring. Coming off of injury, he didn't get an opportunity to participate. So I told him I didn't know a whole lot about him uh, from a player. I knew about him as a person. They don't come much better than Kyle. Uh, but he's had a great camp. Uh, he's healthy. He's playing fast. Uh, he's a really smart player, but he's also very, very aggressive, uh, very strong, excellent pass rusher, but can play the run. He's a complete defensive end. That's what I really like about Kyle. He can play all the downs. Your, the, the safety position is a little bit unique right now, given that Wayne is such a young guy. And then on the other side, you've got Denzel, who's you know, older and, and mm -hmm. smart and experienced. How has he been able to, A, direct this defense, Denzel, and then B, help out Wayne? Well, I think Wayne might know as much about football as anybody we have on defense. And um, Wayne is somebody that jumped out to me right away in the, in the spring, That uh, a real cerebral guy that uh, just gets the game. He's one of those guys that uh, is a football junkie that understands it. And so uh, I think it'll help having Denzel that's played a bunch of football uh, maybe to, to calm his nerves a little bit or, or, or things. But from the standpoint of understanding what we're doing defensively, I think they're all pretty equal coming in because none of them knew what our systems were, were about. And Wayne's picked it up probably as well as anybody we have on defense. And uh, he'll be a leader for us back there. And that's something that uh, as a young player, you, you sometimes say, boy, I, I don't know if you want a young guy leading a back end, so to speak. This kid's got that. He's got that it factor. Wayne has that it factor, and uh, 
Um, the players know it too. I mean, you see that kid flying around making plays. I, I expect a, a really big season out of Wayne. How is Denzel doing back there then in, in terms of how you learned the system? How, how D- done really well. You know, we played him at the strong safety where Wayne's been playing uh, for three-fourths of spring ball. And now we've got him settled in at free safety, which is a more comfortable position for him, more of what he probably played last year. And um, he's he's done a really nice job, really pleased with the growth that Denzel's made from spring to summer to fall. You can tell he's put an awful lot of effort in and work on his own to learn the system, to watch film, to, to visit with Coach Klanerman so that he feels really comfortable. I think Denzel's playing really fast right now. And the other thing, um, you know, I, I'm learning about Denzel. He's healthy, and he's not always been that way. And he's he's really healthy right now. When he's healthy, he's playing with a lot of confidence. Uh, well, last time we talked to Skyler, he, he really raved about what he's seen from from Joe Irvin about how well he's picking up the offense, especially how well he picks up blocks for mm-hmm. a freshman. What what have you seen from him? Uh, he's uh, you know really wise beyond his years for a freshman. He just the game has slowed down for him. Um, he's still not a guy that we're going to play 50 snaps back there. We have too much talent at the running back spot. He'll have a spot, and, and uh, where that is will still be determined because Mess and, and uh, the guys are still kind of going through the plan. But um, as far as understanding the blocking schemes and understanding the protection, I think he's done a really good job, and he's got a great, he's got a great knack to – uh, have have some vision in and out of breaks and in and out of the hole to to be able to hit some things really quickly and then he's got really good hands out of the backfield so uh, we'll play an awful lot of running backs we've talked about this uh, at length before but whether or not Joe plays a lot in the first game or a little in the first game will just still be is still to be determined but I'm excited about his progress and, and then at least on, on the depth chart with both Nick and John kind of listed as co number twos is it like that's something you want to have maybe decided by the end of practice this week or more like we're not going to know until we throw them both in line games? We're not going to know. You know, we have some things. We think both of them have different skill sets um, and uh, both of them are doing things well enough that they both deserve the opportunity to take equal reps. And, and, and at a practice, obviously, Skyler takes the one reps and then we split up those two reps. Now, it's been great because of the double reps. They've been able to get a ton of opportunities, but uh, um, that'll, that'll stay fluid. That'll be a work in progress until um, they have an opportunity to compete. I'll let you know Saturday at six o'clock. I mean, I, 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 it, there's so many things that you have to do um, as a head coach uh, in in a in a place that's unfamiliar to you as far as how it goes, how we go about uh, preparation and pregame warmups and things we're doing at the hotel and stuff. That I've I'm caught up in everything administratively that I uh, want to get squared away with Hank. That um, I'm excited. Uh, I, I'm thrilled to be able to obviously to be the head coach here to, to run out of the tunnel and and uh, I can't wait for that but there's I, it's no I'm no different than the guys I can't worry about Saturday I can not worry about today and making sure that we have a great practice making sure that uh, our guys are on point with our with our red zone period today and our third down period but I think that's what keeps all of us humble and it keeps all of us um you know, on edge is the fact that let's just handle Tuesday. Let's let's attack Tuesday and stack Tuesday on top of Monday. Monday was a pretty good practice, which typically the first day of school is tough to have a really good practice. I was really pleased with the guys with the uh, the effort and energy that came out Monday. Now let's go attack Tuesday and we'll keep working through that week. Coach, I know you can't quite duplicate the two mentions. You had another pit stop and not a dome here, but you want that to be a spectacle when the team makes the field. I hope so. I, I hope uh, the guys are excited about it. Once again, this is a player's game, and, and um, they've had some input into what we're doing too. Um, and I think that's important because, uh, you know, this is – it doesn't matter how I – I mean, I doesn't matter how I perform or the coaches perform. We have our jobs to do on Saturday, um, but it's the players that have the biggest job, and it's the player's game, and, and I want those guys to have – 
uh, excitement and, and uh, energy when they're coming out, and I know they will, and, and we've talked about some things, um, but we'll, we'll kind of let that unfold on Saturday. Um, you know, I love the attitude of our defense and it, and it's, let's be honest, it starts with coach Hayes, you know, because he has a, an infectious energy that it, it's the same, it, whether it's a Monday at practice or a Friday at practice, that's what, uh, I was so excited about getting Scotty here and something that I remember about coach Hayes is, you know, he's excited about this game every day, all the time. And so the kids see that and then they get the, the energy and excitement. Um, tackling something that you always worry about in the first game because we're not hitting every day in practice. You can't, you know, we're not tackling to the ground every day in practice. We're simulating drills that we're running through our correct leverage. Uh, and if you run through your correct leverage, you're going to, you're going to be a really good tackling team. If you hesitate and you cut somebody off or don't keep the cup in what we, we talk about in our tackling leverage, uh, then you're going to struggle. Um, I've been pleased because we have so so many good running backs, and we brought eight running backs into camp, and we filter them in and out, uh, whether it's been K-State versus K-State stuff or scout team stuff. We have really good backs that challenge us, especially in the in the secondary and linebackers that have the the most difficult tackles, and so um, you know uh, we're. We're planning on being a really good tackling team, but I know that that's a work in progress is just the way practices go anymore. You mentioned six or seven wide receivers being in the mix. Is Jabashian Taylor one of those right now? You bet. Yeah, he'll be a, he'll be a big part of the of the package and the game plan. And, uh, you know, just it'll all depend on what personnel groups we have. But uh, been excited about what Sebastian's done. Um, he's had a really good camp and, and continues to, to gain confidence. And he's such a mismatch because of his size not not only his height but he's a strong physical guy that uh, I, I'm excited because I think he's gonna have a really big year mm. not really <laughs> try to get a workout in if I can <laughs> but no I, I I don't I mean I, I think um, the guys will learn, and that's why this whole week is, you know, I want to ask the players, what rituals do they have? I don't want to bug with what they have. I want to keep what, the things that they think are really important. We're going to keep those things. Some things that I think are really important, we're going to implement those things. But that's why it's a collective effort between um, really the leadership council and the captains and myself of trying to eliminate the anxiety and have fun. I mean, shoot, we only get 12 of these opportunities every year. We better go tee it up and have a good time. Coach, you said something about working through with your staff and looking at true freshmen maybe to use on a week-to-week -week basis. I understand that you know uh, personnel and formations would, have, would impact it, but do you have mm -hmm. a general number of how many you think can maybe be used this week? I, I would say it'll be smaller probably this week, under six probably this week. You know, I think Josh is in there. Joe could be in there. Um, Jack Stanine could be in there a little bit. Um, and then there's some other guys that we're still – working in that we haven't had practice Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I want to see how close they are from a special team standpoint. Coach, a topic of conversation around this team was how they'll handle themselves whenever the lights turn on on Saturday. With this being game week, looking forward, what do you expect to see out of your team? I expect uh, the seniors that have played an awful lot of Big 12 football to really shine when the lights come on. I, I really do. And I expect those same guys to handle the young guys that haven't um, with, uh, with great energy for those kids and, and to let them know that this, they belong on this stage and uh, that they're there to help them. I mean, this is, this is a sport where you better, you better rely on your brother next to you. And uh, I've been really pleased because uh, I think we have a really close-knit group of guys and uh, uh, they've encouraged one another. And there's going to be some freshmen that are going to make a mistake or sophomores and, that haven't played. And that's that's football. They're going to make mistakes. As coaches, we're going to make mistakes. Um, we just can't make the big mistake, uh, and we have to make sure that uh, uh, we have, we're able to correct that mistake and so that the kid or the coach doesn't feel like, oh, boy, I made that big error. Um, because uh, we have some guys that can make plays that are young players that just need the opportunity, and then confidence always breeds uh, a lot of uh, you know, self self-taught abilities to say, you know, I can do this. And there's a lot of guys that feel they can. They've just got to get on that stage, have success, and say, yeah, I belong at this level. I, I know there are certainly some people who maybe look at this game and say, FCS opponent, big place, you win these. What, I mean, with all your experience down there, 
Yeah, I, I think you, nobody can say that anymore. And I really, I, I got to be honest with you, I don't think that that's said anymore. I really don't. You can say what you want about, you know, it's an FCS against, you know, Appalachian State started this thing a long time ago. They went and beat Michigan at their own game. And I've been a part of a number of those things where you, you're in that locker room and it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. This is mano a mano, me against the guy across from you. And I don't think that that's said anymore. And uh, I, I talk to the guys about playing Nickel State. I talk to the guys about playing a quarterback that's been there going on his fourth year. I talk about uh, playing a, uh, a team that um, is used to winning, that has that pedigree of expecting to win. I don't talk about we're playing an FCS team. You know, that, that just doesn't get talked about. You talk about the, the task at hand and the, and the opponents you have. And um, there's, too, there's too many good football players across the country for people to worry about divisions and level of play. This is uh, the first year going back to team captains. Um, none of these team captains had previously been, you know, just the team captains before. Have you been able to gain a sense of the personality of these guys just as they, you know, become leaders and emerge as leaders of the team and what they like to deal with? Um, you know, we haven't had many captains meetings yet. We've had all leadership council meetings, and now we'll, we'll transition to captains meetings. But, uh, um, you know, I, I just see the way they interact with their, with their peers and their teammates. It was pretty evident to me that when, and, and it's all team voted on, no, no coaches vote on it. I just, we have the team vote, and, and then we take it from there. It was pretty evident that uh, the guys in the room uh, had a great amount of respect uh, for the seven guys we did name. Uh, when, when we talked to Eli uh, last week, you know, and I asked him about, well, who's, who's the vocal leader on defense? Last week it was Duke Schelling, he's gone. He mentioned, well, that was J-Ball, and he's yep. in practice, but that's not going to help on game day, so he's going to be on the field. So do you have a guy yet you need to defense the vocal leader? Um, no, it's a work in progress. It should be all of them. You know, it, it, Eli's going to be one that we're going to count on. It's got to be Trey Deshaun. It's got to be Reggie. It's got to be Wyatt. It's got to be Wayne. It's got to be Walt. It's got to be AJ. I, I'm excited because we have a number of guys. It's got to be Denzel. All, there's so many guys that it can be, um, but they have to feed off each other. And um, maybe it's maybe it's segmented a little bit too. Maybe somebody controls the, the DBs, linebackers, and, and defensive line. But uh, um, we'll, we'll find out who the alpha guy is out there. You're right, Justin Hughes was that guy throughout spring ball, and uh, you know it was so late when he got injured that um, you know we're still trying to identify. And, and then uh, I saw that Jerron is listed as a starting nickel guy. What, what can you tell us about him? Just he's not a guy who's necessarily played a ton, so he's not throwing a lot of sand. And people yeah, I, I've been really pleased with how how well he's understood our system. It goes back to even things we we're talking about uh, with Wayne. Jerron really gets the game, understands what we're doing. Uh, Jonathan Durham's going to play as well there. I think both of them have had really good camps, and I'm excited that we have depth at that position. Um, both just, are, I think, are really good football players. Both are going to play a lot of special teams for us. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't worried about who had played, who hadn't played. He's he's kind of risen to the top as being one of our best guys. And so uh, I'm excited to, to watch and see what he can do. Okay. Uh, what, what did Philip Brooks do to separate himself as the, basically the primary return guy for both of those teams? Uh, consistency, I think, catching the footballs one. Um, he's got a knack back there of just finding open space, whether it's on punt D or, or on kickoff return. He just has a knack for being patient and finding finding the seams, and then once he does hit it, he hits it hard. And, and uh, uh, I think – He's got a lot of confidence, too, and that's what you're always looking for on a punt returner or a kick returner is somebody that wants the ball in their hands and is confident to say, just give me a crease. We've spent an awful lot of time on the return uh, units this fall camp, and, and I'm excited to see what Philip can do. All right, appreciate it. Thanks. Thank